Now here's your last brain hack for the day in how to use your mind and your body. Sex. Hey, welcome back for another episode of Porn Brain Rewire with me, Dr. Trish Lee, back in my office. Um, today, we are going to talk about erectile dysfunction, and I'm going to frame it for you as arousal dysfunction in the brain. So we're gonna start with number one, what is the problem? Number two, I'm going to very clearly and specifically tell you how that is happening in your brain and how from your brain that is cascading through neurotransmitters, hormones, cellular excitation, down to your man parts for sexual arousal. And number three, I'm gonna give you the solution. And of course, if you stay with me until the end, I'm going to give you a brain hack strategy for the day so that you can start backing yourself out of erectile dysfunction this very moment. It's not because I have to frame it differently than it is. I have to help you understand that erectile dysfunction is a brain problem. It's not a problem with your man parts. So I need you to understand that so that you can figure out where the problem lies. That way we can get to the solution together. Let's dig in. So the problem when it comes to erectile dysfunction is desensitization in the reward center and the reward pathways in the brain, primarily in the midbrain, then the pathways extend to the frontal lobe. Uh, I am referring to this desensitization as sexual donuts. If you've ever done donuts in your car, uh, and actually my bestie's son, he's part of a car club. I'm sure it's an illegal car club because scanners for the, for the popo are involved. And if you're a police officer, I mean no disrespect. Uh, they use scanners to, to see if the police are coming and they do donuts in parking lots and things like that. He was telling me about this car club culture. I'm like, that's kind of cool, but at the same time, slightly terrifying. Some, some people rent cars and rent U-Hauls and things like that because they don't wanna trash their tires, which leads me to the sexual donuts. They don't wanna trash their tires. So we know if you take your car and you pump the brakes while accelerating and you spin around and around and around. Yes, that's going to be highly stimulating, but it's gonna trash the engine and it's especially going to wear down the tread of those tires. It's gonna trash your tires and your engine. So we're gonna think about those D2 receptors in your brain as the tires and the tread being worn down. So this is important because when you get new tires, it has nice thick tread on it so that it's easy for you to drive around town. But if you do donuts and you wear that tread down, not only does it become more dangerous because your tires won't grip to the road anymore and you could get in an accident when it rains, it's also trashing the engine the main brain area, the whole main brain, it's trashing that engine because you are gassing and braking at the same time. Well, guess what? Porn does the same thing in your brain. And basically, the more you go into the screen, it's creating gassing and braking in your brain. Every time you go back into the screen, it's also wearing down that tread of the dopamine receptors in the midbrain. And what that's doing is it's making it so you need more dopamine to feel the same as you did before with less stimulation. And let's talk about number two, what's actually happening in your brain. So when you hit the easy button and you go into the screen and up pops a scenario of varying intensity, but it might have started at lower levels of intensity and then with tolerance and escalation, it may have increased to higher levels of intensity so that you can feel good. 
and then now you're consuming pornography and most likely you've coupled that with masturbation for high levels of physical stimulation on top of the high levels of mental stimulation. And that mental stimulation is auditory, it's visual, it's tactile. When you, when you couple it with, with masturbation, you are giving your brain a super normal stimulus of porn and masturbation. What that does is it's wearing down the tread of the tires in your brain. So they are no longer able to feel the same way. Now what that does is it is simultaneously creating the pendulum brain that swings back and forth between fast and slow energy. Now, if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction, at a certain point, that pendulum can't swing anymore. And what happens is the brain gets stuck in neutral. So if you've ever done donuts, and especially if you've done a lot of sexual donuts, what finally happens is there's no more tread on your tires and there's no more juice in your engine. And it's like your brain has shifted into neutral, something I call drained brain. Now that pendulum swings between extra fast and extra slow and it'll swing back and forth as long as you're caught up in the 4D cycle of porn. That's dopamine drip, dopamine deluge, you get a flood of dopamine when you're in your porn session, dopamine drowning, you're drowned out and you feel all numb and your brain feels good and you've escaped from reality and then now it's time to go back to reality but your brain is stuck in a dopamine deficit. That means your life is worse when you come out of porn and when your brain is drained, you are stuck in neutral. Now let's go back to the idea of erectile dysfunction as arousal dysfunction in the brain. So pendulum brain, swinging back and forth between extra fast and extra slow. Extra fast is stressed out or wired. Extra slow is overwhelmed, fatigued, or tired. So if you're in pendulum brain, you feel wired and tired most of the time. That makes your brain want to go into the screen to stimulate and soothe and calm down your brain at the same time. You want to feel excited and aroused, but you also want to feel chill. But let's talk about drain brain. Drain brain is you're no longer swinging back and forth. Now you're stuck in neutral. Neutral means your get up and go got up and went. You feel unmotivated. You might feel truly depressed you feel stuck. So if you're stuck in neutral, how can you possibly feel sexually aroused? You can barely feel healthy arousal in your life. Your brain in pendulum brain or drain brain is like a manual transmission that's stuck in a gear. So going back to arousal, to be able to be sexually aroused, or optimally to be sexually aroused, your brain should be in the green zone or as close to it as possible. The further you are into pendulum brain or the further you are into drain brain, the more difficult it's going to be to be sexually aroused. And honestly, if you're stuck in drain brain, that's going to make it more difficult to be sexually aroused. Pendulum brain, you can kind of bring yourself back out of a bit. Drain brain, a brain can really get stuck in drain brain and even though you haven't watched porn or masturbated in a year, you could still be stuck in neutral because remember, you've done so many sexual donuts that you've basically worn down the tread in the dopamine receptors in your brain and your engine is kind of fried and you're stuck in neutral and you might have unwired the pattern that needs the high level of stimulation from all the dopamine from porn and masturbation but you haven't healed that reward center and the frontal lobe and the reward pathways. So unwiring is not the same as rewiring. There's technology that can rewire your brain for you. You know how I know? Because I do it with people all day, every day, and it is so rewarding. Again, it is a top tier high level service. You can check it out on 
drtrishlee.com, personal neurofeedback coaching. You get to work with me personally. Once we know what your brain is doing, then we shift your brain out of the state that it's in into a more regulated neurological pattern and it starts to come online. It starts to become rewired. But here's what I want you to know. You can either use three levels to be able to heal your brain from erectile dysfunction. Number one is the lowest level, entry level. And I like to think about, about this as the pyramid of possibilities. If you draw a pyramid and you, you cut it into three sections, the lowest section is the largest. And so it tends to be the most affordable, but it does take more time and energy. But basically, that lowest level is entry level. You can use your mind and body. In the middle is mid-level. The mid-level strategy to be able to rewire your brain so you can heal from erectile dysfunction uses technology plus your mind and your body. And that peak performance top level that is more expensive, it's more of an investment, but there's less time and energy that you have to use, that's the high level service that I offer. It's professional neurofeedback coaching. I want you to know there are three ways that you can address erectile dysfunction because it is arousal dysfunction in your brain. Back to what's happening in your brain is that we know it's a dysregulated electrical energy pattern and that changes the way that neurotransmitters cascade it changes the way that the electrical impulses that travel down your spinal cord, through your peripheral nerves, to your penis, to smooth muscle activation and cellular excitation, the literal cells that are being communicated from your brain down. This is a top-down approach and it's true that your brain controls every impulse in your body. So if your brain is not working at healthy arousal patterns and levels, then the way that it falls out throughout your entire body is changed. So your smooth muscle activation so that you get an erection is decreased because of this dysfunction in your brain pattern. At the same time, the cells are not excited at the same level that they would be if your brain was working with a healthy arousal pattern. So let's go to number three, then what is the solution? Okay, back to number one. If the problem is desensitization in the brain, then number three, the solution is resensitization in the brain. So the beauty of your brain using neuroplasticity and Hebb's law that says that neurons that fire together, wire together, neuroplasticity means your brain will change in the direction that you are pushing it. Neuroplasticity can be your best friend or your worst enemy. And if you've been going into the screen for porn and masturbation, it's unfortunately become your worst enemy. It's causing the erectile dysfunction that you struggle with. And this is how every time you hit the easy button and you get that flood of dopamine, you are desensitizing the reward center. And if you do it over and over and over, you're creating the proverbial downward spiral of erectile function by creating erectile dysfunction. So the solution is healthy erectile function and resensitization of the reward center, the reward pathways, and the frontal lobe. So, very good question. I'm sure you're asking, how the hell do I resensitize the midbrain in my brain? This is how you do it. Number one, this is the part you're not gonna like. Are you ready for it? You must stop desensitizing the reward center in your brain. This is the tricky part. This is why I made the Porn Brain Rewire program. Most people can't stop hitting the easy button because it's a do dopamine dependency. It's truly addiction level. And I don't love using the word addiction, but I'm going to use the word dopamine dependency. What needs to happen is you give your brain 
less dopamine while you're rewiring it to not need that level of dopamine. So, you know, in, in the classic cold turkey fashion, you identify all the sexual areas in your life that are unhealthy. You identify those sexual acting out behaviors and you stop doing them altogether, cold turkey. So your brain hack to resensitize your brain is number one, stay away from porn and masturbation. Yes, I said masturbation too. You have to because your brain is used to this high, high level of dopamine from porn and masturbation. And if you're masturbating still, likely you're using porn fantasy to do so. If you are not able to do that, get into my 90 day program so we can help you do that. So go to drtrishlee.com, check out the 90 day program. It's an awesome investment that you have for life if you need it. Get into that program so you can get the tools, the strategies, and the support to succeed. All right, moving on to number two. How do you resensitize? Let's make the assumption you're no longer desensitizing. Number two, how do you resensitize? So we're gonna start with your entry level, lowest level of the pyramid of possibilities. You use your mind and body. We know that exercise is a number one way to get a lot of dopamine, serotonin, uh, norepinephrine, all the good neurotransmitters, decrease in cortisol, all, exercises everything your brain needs to feel good. Now, I want you to know if you found yourself becoming compulsive or exercising too much, you might be replacing your porn habit by too much exercise because it is highly dopamine producing. Balance here, we're going for balance. So getting out there every day is a really healthy way to resensitize and to sensitize and to fire up those dopamine receptors in my brain. It's not a super normal stimulus that's desensitizing my brain. It's healthily sensitizing my brain. So exercise, exercise is different than movement. Exercise is you're working hard to do something. Movement would be a walk. And we know nature, there's a lot of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin, the happiness trifecta in nature. Get out in nature to resensitize your brain. Food's very dopamine producing. Dark chocolate, chocolate has been shown to give your brain 50% more dopamine. That's why I love dark chocolate. Or if you need to go milk chocolate with some sugar, we know sugar is dopamine producing, but also could you could err on the side of too much sugar and you would get that unnatural dopamine high from too much sugar. So food, prepare a meal, take the time to not easy button it, but to use some executive function and prepare a meal. Once you put a little effort into it, it can really become dopamine producing over time at smaller levels and that at a bigger level when you get to enjoy that meal with friends or family. Try it. I know you think, some of you might think I'm nutty about this. It's really important and everybody has to eat. So everybody should learn how to cook a meal or two. Okay, so resensitizing. Use your mind and body, exercise, move in nature, make some food, don't hit the easy button, hit the less than easy button to resensitize your brain. Do your hobbies, figure out what you like to do, not what your partner likes to do, not what your mom likes you to do, do what you like to do. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, figure out what that looks like in your life. Use your mind, and your body to resensitize the reward center in your brain. The second mid-level tier, use the Muse brain sensing brain training headband. So the cool thing about the brain training headband is it offers one universal protocol to resensitize the temporal lobes which get into the midbrain and the frontal lobe. It's the perfect tool to rewire your brain after it's been damaged from porn and masturbation. It's been desensitized. It's a perfect piece of technology to help you resensitize your brain. And it's mid-tier because it's affordable for most people, especially if you get it with my link. If you are able to stop desensitizing your brain by figuring out all of those highly dopamine-producing activities, start resensitizing your brain 
using your mind and your body, find the dopamine producing activities in your life and start doing them. Now here's your last brain hack for the day and how to use your mind and your body. Sex. So you know how I told you chocolate gives you 50% more? Sex with a partner that you care about with intimacy, which is not slathered in high dopamine producing activities, which I call the three ring circus. It's not a three ring circus activity. It's at lower levels where you have dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. It's a sensual experience that you are engaging with relationally with your partner produces a lot of dopamine. So you have to be careful not to go to fantasy. You have to stay present and enjoy sexual experiences with your partner and it will resensitize your brain if you stay away from fantasy and you stay away from porn and masturbation. You don't have to engage in sexual experiences obviously to resensitize your brain. You do have to get on purpose in your work, in your relationships, and in your hobbies because that is teaching your brain and conditioning it to go back into your life to crush that dopamine deficit and start getting dopamine flowing in your world. And at the same time, you're not going back into the screen. That will resensitize your brain. But if you have your partner, I encourage you, go there instead of going back into the screen. Okay, so until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.